Okay, welcome, welcome. Thank you. How is everybody doing? Hi, Linda. So I want to um, introduce Linda Zeckel, who is with the Guild of Miniature Artisans, the International Guild of Miniature Artisans. I'm so excited to have you here today. We're going to be talking about the Guild show. Crazy excited about that uh, show coming up. And I'm so excited to be talking to you as show director um, to get the, the inside scoop about what's happening and to encourage folks to definitely come out and see this show. So thank you for joining me today. Um, Thank you why don't we get me. right to it? Tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself, your involvement in miniatures before we get on to, you know, okay. the guild. Yeah. Okay. Well, I always made something as a kid, always. Even as a little kid, yeah. I made stuff for Barbies. I made stuff from the newspaper. We cut out the little pictures and the coupons and made our own Barbie food. I always made Christmas ornaments, always did a lot with the Girl Scouts. So uh, it's kind of a natural succession. And at some point, the local craft store here, Pearls, used to yeah. always have a bulletin board of classes. And right. we had a local miniature class. And I thought, oh my God, how amazing would that be? So I did that. Yeah. And I actually, many, many years ago, I was visiting a friend in LA and I went to the Getty, the Getty Museum. Oh, and I saw yeah, okay. three of my favorite words, medieval, miniature, painting class in 10 minutes. Interesting. In 10 wow. minutes. Wow, okay. So 10 I minutes, that's a, not a lot of time. I was like a, a monk and we painted little portraits for the Bible out of yeah. uh, paint that we made out of uh, ground up bugs and stuff. So yeah. from, from that, I came back and I'm like, you know what, there's gotta be stuff in, in our local area. So I found right. a local club right. and um, awesome. Yeah. they used to do a lot with the Tom Bishop show. He used to be right. in, in Fort Lauderdale as well. Right. So right. from there, I really was like, oh, this is my hobby. This is, these yeah. are my people. This is my hobby. Right. So from right. there, just so you're kinda... actually, you're like, you're super involved. I mean, you're yeah. a maker, you're a crafter, you're involved with the guild. I mean, you go to guild school, correct? You're I you're a student school. as well. Seventh year. Then, yes. so, yeah. So like fast forward to here is, you know, now are you, you are the show director for the, you know, one of probably the largest shows, you know, in, in the US, if not the world um, mm -hmm. for miniature artists, mm -hmm. artisans. So how did that connection happen? Like, and, and tell us a little bit about what, um, you know, I think we should take a step back actually. Talk a little bit for those who might not know what is the guild you know what is the guild igma.org and folks i'm going to make sure i put the links in the in the in the comment section so you could um go see for yourself but tell us a little bit about the guild for people who might not know about what that organization is all about well you know in the beginning i was always very nervous about joining the guild because it sounded scary and i wasn't an artisan and to me i was like a, a miniature tourist i always want to go uh -huh. find stuff and do cool classes, but I was never on the path to be an artisan. I, right, I was always, right. you know, oh, this is awesome. Let me go check it out. Oh, let me take a yeah. cool class. And the guild, actually, if you look at the word guild, it's an organization of people with related, related interests and goals that help each other. So yeah. that's, that's actually a, a friendly word, right? And yeah, for sure. And I really never thought to go to any of the guild study programs or casting because I thought that was exclusive for artisans, but right, totally wrong, right. totally wrong. Yeah. And right. um, a friend of ours, he got a scholarship for casting about eight years ago. And I had yeah. always thought, oh my God, that would be so amazing to go to. And me and Sophia, who's the guild admin, we're very good friends mm. and we travel together. So we decided to go to Castine. Uh, first, we thought we were like imposters and we really shouldn't be there, but oh my God, right, it's such right. a warm and welcoming community of yeah. artisans that help each other and teach each other stuff that- Yeah, I think I think, you're, I think people get the, uh, the, the impression that the guild is, you know, you know, is, is only for the artisans. And, you know, it, it, it's not, it is for everyone at every level. Um, Absolutely, the organization we have to change itself, that. We have to change. Yeah, that is for sure. 
Yeah. Um, but the organization itself, from what I understand, was set up because there wasn't a forum necessarily right. for where the artists can showcase their work, which ultimately became the Guild show. Is that right? Is that sort of how the progression happened? Yes. Actually, it started in 1979. A group of uh, people wanted to create a um, objective to promote miniatures as an art form instead of just like crafts. So it started out with placement of miniatures in museums and galleries and collections. They also started doing a showcase, which is where the show came from, to showcase some of these amazing artisans. And we have artisans that have stuff in museums around the world. Um, yeah. People that have stuff in the Smithsonian. Uh, you yeah. showcased Kay's M Museum on your show one time. Like right. amazing, amazing, you know, 100% accurate in scale, perfect miniatures. Right, and I think that that's probably one of the key identifiers that makes the Guild stand out from other organizations. It really, it, it is an accrediting organization, I think the only one that I know of really, yeah. that creates a credit uh, for artisan works, the IGMA Fellow Program, the Artisan right. Program. It, is that right? I think I think it is the only organization. It's the Am only I right one about that? I know of. Um, you know, yeah. I, I've never really looked for anything else, but I think it is the only yeah. one. And anytime I see, yeah. I, and I, you know, sometimes go on a hunt for other miniature classes, like to compare yeah. to Cassine or the study programs, and I can't find anything, you know? Yeah, there really, is, there really is nothing else out there that I'm, I'm aware of. So it really was born out of this need to yeah. showcase artists and miniatures, sell it to the, tell, sell it to the public. Um, so you, it is the 40th year, is that is that right? We're in the 40th year of the organization. No, uh, 2019 was the 40th. So we're oh, at- so uh, more than 40. Yeah, we're over 40. So- 40, um, 40 plus years. Yeah. Yeah, so that's awesome. So how did you get involved as show director? And talk a little bit about what the role of the show director is. Okay, so um, I started going to Castine every year. Um, I ended up on the scholarship committee so I'm actually still on the scholarship nice. committee for people that are apl applying to come to Castine, which is awesome. And then my good friend and travel buddy, Sophia Harris is the guild admin. And right. she said, you know what? There's an opening for the show director. I think you yeah. can do it. I think you can do yeah. it. I've organized a lot of stuff through my jobs yeah. and like charitable stuff. So, yeah. and I thought, you know what? We need people and bring this forward and yeah. um you know what i'm happy to do it um i'm excited awesome. to, to bring the show forward and bring new people in and just keep our happy little hobby going exactly so then now this is your second show that you're organizing correct a show director yeah. that's coming yeah, up i did i did the covid Fantastic. year which was very fun and different so uh right right so actually yeah. still a good show we still had a pretty good show yeah. last year for sure. Um, I thought it was a really great entrance back in. Um, it was a really exciting show. Definitely had a great energy to it. So so what what do you think? Um, let's talk about the show that's coming up. Okay. Um, so talk a little bit about what, what makes a show so exciting. What makes it so that people look forward to it? What are some of the things that you're looking for in this show specifically coming up? Well, we're trying to be very well-rounded in this show. I've got a little bit of everything. Uh, we start Wednesday with a historic houses tour. So you can go get inspired if there's uh, stuff that you wanna make later. We've got classes all week starting on Wednesday with classes on making finishes and uh, dressing dolls. I've got some 3D classes coming in so you can learn the 3D technology. There's classes nice. learning to solder. There's classes on um, the, I've got, I've got a virtual class. One of my, one of my teachers, she was actually on your show as well, Esther Marker. Okay, she's yeah. Gonna, she's gonna do her class virtually. So I, I like a big variety. I like a lot of excitement. We've got an auction. You're gonna be our auctioneer, which is amazing. I am, that's We've right. We've got uh, <laughs> demos, demos and desserts is Friday night. So you can come eat some free desserts and, and people are gonna, teach their craft at different tables so you can see how people make things um, yeah saturday, so, so, it's a, so it's a whole yeah go ahead sorry saturday I, i'm hosting about three girl scout troops to come in 
they're going to oh, be working nice. on their miniature badge. There's an actual badge for miniature artists now. Who knew? That's awesome. Who knew, right? So um, they're going to be coming in Saturday. Hopefully they stay for the auction and, you know, these get these these new kids involved in the next yeah. generation. And we've got a lot of dealers. We've got a lot of really amazing dealers that are coming. And it's a two-day show, Saturday and Sunday. We've got a speaking right. Saturday night, uh, Sally Wallace, mm -hmm. that's going to be talking about her book. She's traveled the world and collected many amazing things and makes many amazing things. So yeah. I think variety, a variety, a little bit of something for everybody. Um, yeah, that's and you certainly about. you certainly have that variety and that broad range of things to do. So, you know, you could either stop in on the weekend and, and you know, spend a few hours at the show or you can get there on when does it start on Wednesday, right? Wednesday is the first classes. tour, yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 a really nice. It sounds like you have a really nice balance of activities. If you are like the all-in miniaturist and you want to spend days uh -huh. <laughs> making, doing workshops, and then buying, and so, so it really is a little bit of for every range, if you will, right. of folks who are involved in this hobby. I would say, right? Is that right? Is that, is that a good way to put it? And we also have dealers that you know sell finished items. We have dealers that sell tools. We have dealers that sell supplies we have um, a little bit of everything so even yeah, if you aren't yeah. looking for museum quality miniature you should really come to the show because you never know what will inspire you and be like oh my god i gotta go get that tool and this glue right. and let me go get that fabric that i saw so yeah, yeah i think there's a little yeah. bit of something for everybody yeah let's talk about the artisans i think what's so excited exciting about the guild show is that it is an international show which means you draw in artisans from around the world Yes. Um, let's talk about it. So, so how many artists will be represented and are a lot of them returning? Are there any new uh, artists that we might not have seen before? What's, what's, um, what's the story behind the artists who will be rep represented? We have over 65 artists, artisans from all over the place, uh, people from South Africa. Um, Beautiful. We, I don't know who's new because I'm new. So maybe they came before yeah. I did and I don't want to say they're new. And then they're like, I wasn't new. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yeah, we've, we've got a good variety and actually on the website, you can see all the dealers and you can click through to their websites and learn a little bit about them before you even come. So Perfect. You know, that's there yeah. and you know, you're like, oh, well, let me see who does this. And you can, you can, it links to all their websites now if they have one. Yeah. And Perfect. Then you've got a good preview of, you know, who you're looking for and what you might want to see. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's actually a good point. It's like checking out who's going to be there, seeing their work in advance of actually getting there. Because I know when I was, you know, when I was first entering and going to these shows, they can be pretty overwhelming. I know. So I think sure. it's, a, it's a good suggestion. What you're saying is go and look and see who's going to be there. Get a feel for the lay of the land because that'll at least help guide you when you get there. Yeah. But one of my next questions was going to be like, for those who may not have ever attended a show, what kind of advice would you give um, for folks like in terms of managing that? Because like I said, it can be really uh, overwhelming. It is overwhelming. So <laughs> besides going and checking out at the lay of the land, which I think is a great idea, go and yep. check the links. What would you say, what, what advice would you give to let's say a newbie who's never been to a show before? Um, comfortable shoes. <laughs> you're <laughs> going to be, you're going to be, uh, bring your glasses if uh, stuff is little for you. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. you know, be, be open-minded, be friendly. A lot of these dealers are actually teachers. So, you know, right. don't be, don't be scared to ask a question. Um, yeah. you know, we're all here to help each other. This is, this is a, you know, more of a club, uh, guild show, right? So it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a, it's a tribe. Let's say it, let's, it's called a tribe of people that want to help each other. So don't yeah. be scared. Come say hi. I'll show you around. You know, if somebody wants to come to the show and say, hey, I'm looking for this, come say hi. Yeah. I'll point you in the right direction. Yeah, no, I think that'll be great. And that's, and that's a wonderful opening for folks too. Yeah, and they should really stick around for the auction because you mm. never know what's there. We also are right. going to have a silent auction outside. So there'll be some items you can bid on as well. And yeah. Um, yeah, just come and have fun. You know, there's there's yeah. some beginner classes. So if you're a beginner, maybe come. If you want to come Friday, there's some uh, half day classes that maybe gives you a little bit of taste of something to see if that's yeah. something you want to turn into a hobby. 
So it, are there class spaces available for some of these workshops or are, are yes. you know, are they booked or yeah, there are? Some are okay, booked, good. but even if they're booked, uh -huh. get on the waiting list because sometimes okay. we're gonna open, open up another session or we get a bigger room. So, you yeah. know, even if it's sold out, click on the join the wait list and we'll see what happens. Uh, some, yeah. are, some are good sold advice. out, but I've got space. Yeah, there's still plenty of plenty of fun stuff that people wanted to join. Good. They could definitely come. Yeah, I wanted um, to build on that auction that you mentioned, you know, the auction is a lot of fun. Stick around mm -hmm. for that. It really is not only a lot of fun, but inside tip, you can get some really good deals. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're looking for some serious, because, you know, yeah. the things that are donated to the auction are really awesome pieces. They and are. You can get a really good deal. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you really can. And it's sure. fun. It's, it's fun to just watch the energy in the room of who's bidding and some people, you know, they get, they're on a mission and they got to have that. Yeah. And yeah. And you're really yeah. good about building up the, the excitement in the crowd too. Well, I have a blast doing it. And I uh, just, I mean, for me, it's just all about handling these lovely miniatures and yeah, right. the stories behind them because uh, there's always a story to tell. Um, yeah, so I, I love, love that. Story too. Yeah. Um, so this is great. So we talked a little bit about the event highlights. It's a whole, like almost a whole week worth of stuff to do. Oh. I don't want to just go to the show, which is in and of itself pretty awesome. It is. Um, amazing artists from all over the world. That's exciting. Um, what do you think is one of the reasons why Guild is one of the longest running shows? Why do you think it is that case for the Guild show? Because shows do come and go, but the Guild show has been around for a long time. What do you think it is that is the draw, if you will? Um, I think because it's an organization that it stayed around for so long. It's not one show director that's trying to make um, a profit as running a show. A show is right. maybe not a profitable thing sometimes, you know, and yeah, yeah. this is supported by, um, it's subsidized by the guild itself and the auction mm -hmm. and uh, donations. Yeah. So, you know, it's kept going year to year regardless if it makes money or not. And it's just such a passion of so many of the members that they didn't want to let it go. And I don't want to let it go. And I was like, okay, if nobody else yeah. is going to be the show director, I better be the show director because I want to keep yeah. going to shows. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think you're doing it at the, the right time because miniatures are definitely seeing a surge in interest and awareness. COVID has a lot to do with it. So yeah. there are a lot of new players in this game, if you will. And so, you know, what better time than now to just have the show and be organizing this show yeah. when you've got a whole new audience to probably talk to, which is kind of exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah. like you're, you're touching on COVID. Um, yeah, I, I was yeah. thinking that as well, because, you know, people have learned that they need a hobby to do at their house, right? right? And, you know, yeah. another thing that Gil started doing is the, the virtual learning, which you can do at home, right? But yeah, I think yeah. people love to see people in person. You know, if you've met somebody on Instagram and, and you know, and now you're like, oh my God, I could go meet this person in person, right? You're like, yeah. wow, let me, let me, let me go check that out, right? And, yeah. you know, and people you just, I mean, it, it's, it's really an amazing time with technology that you can you know, reach out to anybody in the world on Instagram or Facebook or Zoom or, or a lot of these things. So, you know, in yeah. some ways COVID kind of forced us to retreat, but then become, yep. you know, virtual almost. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I mean, I could definitely attest to the success of the virtual learning program, having taken the classes myself, loved yeah. it. Nothing will ever replace the personal one on one yeah. and being in a class and being amongst your peers. And yeah, uh, but a great yeah. supplement has been the virtual learning program. Mm -hmm. I love it and I look forward to whatever the next version yeah. of that is. And let me re repeat what you said, which is that some of the class or at least one of the classes will be virtual. So you could you can attend the guild show, you know, virtually right. by taking yeah. a class with um, Esther, Esther yeah. Marker, right? Yeah, we're actually yeah. gonna have it set up in one of the rooms. So if you're at the show, you can attend it at the show because she can't make it. She was not able to get her visa. She's from India. She really, we okay. really tried, um, but, and she's not happy because she was gonna be one of my dealers too. And she just became ours. So, yeah. but I'm like, yeah. well, let's figure it out. Let's, let's make it work. So yeah. in the classroom, she will be virtual on the TV and we will have people in mm -hmm. class 
but we also have students from Australia and um, I think California that will be attending in their living rooms. So I love it. You know, I so love it. That's the new times, right? It, yeah, and it's a happy medium. You know, you get your quote unquote mini fix, uh, but you're not there live, but at least you're there in spirit and you're learning and you're, uh, you know, you've got the interaction with the miniatures. So yeah, I think it's a great, a great, um, a great solve for sure. Do you think that yeah. there'll be more of that moving ahead? Um, I'm open to it. So, you know, and, yeah. and a lot of our population, you know, and you see this more at Castine is yeah. becoming elderly and harder to travel. And, you know, right. some of them are embracing it. So they're like, oh my God, I yeah. can't make the show, but I could still do this class. Yeah. So, yeah. And it goes back to what you were saying before, which is, you know, COVID kind of forced us to learn new things, new ways, yeah. be open to new things, learning, take a class on Zoom. It's just an awesome, I mean, it's terrible that we had COVID, but we have this great stuff that has come out of it. Yeah, it's true. It, they say that for every, yeah. every um, you know, plague or whatever, like the Renaissance came after the Black Plague and the... Yeah, right, right, right. We'll, people we'll are wait, forced we'll, to... I'll be looking people for are that Renaissance. To adapt. Yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're forced to adapt, exactly. <laughs> um, this is, I mean, I can't wait. I'm very excited. So... Uh, in terms of just logistics, are there rooms still available for folks if they are planning to come in or are you totally booked? We are not totally booked. There's, um, wow. there's some like weird things like King sofas. You can still book those. Um, okay. I've reached out to the hotel across the street as my overflow. So that's okay. literally across the street. That's on the website Perfect. as well. So, you know, try, try on the thing. And I've also got like a little waiting list with the hotel. If we get a cancellation, I can add them to the other hotel or whatever. So reach out to me. I'm on the website. You can always get me and yeah. we'll see what we can yeah. figure out. Yeah. And if it's okay, I'll plop your information in the Absolutely. comment section below in case people need to reach out and ask questions or if they want more information about the show. Yeah, um, okay. I know we're very close to the show now, but are you accepting any more dealers? Should somebody say, hey, I'm, I, I want to sell? I have two tables left. <gasps> Ooh, and breaking I think news. I might have one gone, but um, yeah, last year I filled a lot of the room with exhibits just to make the mm -hmm. room look bigger. Um, right. And I spread it out a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit more compact to the way it used to be years ago. So right. Um, right. it's gonna be a pretty full looking room, which is awesome, but I still have two yeah. tickets. So if anybody, as long as you get your stuff to me by August 12th, because that's when the, the stuff goes to the printer, you will be right. in the show brochure. Beautiful. Awesome. Super. So is there anything we missed? Is there anything else that you would like folks to know about the show that's coming up? Let's well, repeat the dates again. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, the dates again. The actual uh, coming into the, the the show dates is actually the weekend. So the show is uh -huh. actually, um, I always look it up because I don't want to say it wrong. The actual show dates are the 24th and the 25th. We have yes, stuff Saturday starting, and Sunday. Right. We have stuff starting on the 21st. Mm -hmm. And we even have a Sunday night class. If people are flying out Monday morning, we've got a oh. Sunday night. Um, actually, I got a Sunday activity, which I'm doing mm -hmm. as for my oh. adult Girl Scouts. If I've got oh, very the, nice. people in the hotel that are still there and we want to redo our little uh, Girl Scout project, it's going to just be a little miniature cookie box in a cookie book, um, a table of Girl Scout cookies. So yeah. and that's, all just, oh, that's awesome. That's for donation. So that's a donation uh -huh. that's going to help the Girl Scout project and any extra money that I get for the Girl Scout project, you know, because there's always somebody that's going to say, I gave you money and you didn't use it. So give it back. So I'm right. going to donate that to the Girl Scouts <laughs> and they have to go donate it to a local animal shelter. Beautiful. So, I so love that. I'm going to try go full circle there. So yeah, that's and Sunday I, afternoon, if people have a late flight and want to hang out, we can do that. It's it's not an Igma quality project. It's clay and fun and glue, but fun. Yeah, and then but I think that's really class. important. That's just really important that you're doing that, and that's wonderful that you're doing that because it is important to get the young folks activated and involved in yeah. miniatures at a, at an early age because that they become the miniature adults. So it's awesome what Absolutely. you're doing. Very nice. And yeah. I practiced on a local troop actually. Uh -huh. I went and bought a box of cookies for inspiration, you know, and I, uh -huh. and I, yeah, of course. 
of course. So I started talking to them <laughs> and then I was a Girl Scout and now they have a new badge for miniaturists and um, which was designed by one of our members. Uh, Monica it. Graham actually designed the badge and everything. So I said, hey, can I practice on you guys? And we did the whole project with, I did it with a local troop and yeah. they were awesome. They've adopted me. We're going to do Christmas miniature projects. And um, I love it. I so love yeah, it. so we'll I just, you know, it. pay it forward, right? Yeah, no, that's wonderful. That's great stuff. Linda, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for chatting with us about the upcoming Guild Show. Thank you for all you're doing as show director and giving back to the community. I look forward to seeing you next month in September. And folks, if you want more information, check down in the comment oh, okay. section below. Yes. And if you register for the show and you say that you came as part of Darren's people, I'll give oh, you a free miniature show brochure that I made. I and love it. I love to one all now. My, to all my Darren people. I so love you get it. that at the show. That's fantastic. And it's got that's like great. all the stuff in there. So that's a little present for all the Darren watchers. Oh, yay. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for interviewing oh. me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been awesome. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next month at the Guild Show. See you there. Have a great rest of your okay, day, guys. everybody. Take Thank care. You. See you soon.